let's talk about gaming in headphones. Let's pause the music so I don't lose my mind. Uh, people do that occasionally. I think even a couple of people that are subscribed, so I should sort of bring it up. Now there's gonna be a separate video from this review that just is me bishing about gamers and gaming headsets and what's right and what's wrong and with the two types of gamers. This is not that, that's upcoming. That'll also come with an update to my uh, recommendations list on RZ review, RZios, and possibly the relaunch of the website. You don't know about the website. Don't worry about the website. Point is, on the table today, I have two things I've been meaning to do. One thing that I just got that was like, oh, I should do that, and I brought back out the Mayflower Arc. What the Mayflower Arc, the Sibisonic Best Connectivity, I don't even know, it doesn't even have a name, it's just this one, the silver one. I got the Sennheiser GSX-1000, which everyone's like, oh, you unboxed that like five months ago, when are you gonna review it? Today. And then the Burst and Play. Now, there's four things on the desk. I've already reviewed the Mayflower Arc. I'll, I'll retouch on what made the Mayflower Arc special and why it's back out. When you buy, let's say, a good set of headphones here, my X1s, which are similar to the X2s, Philips. By the way, everything linked in the description because we're going to have to keep track of shit. You can replace the cable with a Boom Pro like this, where it's just three and a half millimeter. You plug it in. And here's your microphone, and it powers the headphones through this. You got one nice cable all the way down, and usually you get a splitter like this where it takes the uh, microphone output and the headphone output, and you plug the uh, microphone input, and you've plugged them into your onboard sound card. Everything is fine. But onboard sound cards suck. So you end up with a desk that looks like mine, or close to it, where you have, you know, class A power amps and everything. And then when you do this, beep, the problem is you, you separate these two things and all of a sudden, okay, now I'm plugging the headphone out into that, but the microphone still has to go into my onboard or some other device. And when you split the devices, you get ground loop issues because there's four wires in here, one ground for the microphone, the left and the right channel, and then you split three hots. When you split the ground, you get what the hell's wrong with my headphones? So, the only way to avoid having ground loop issues when you're using a wire like this is to either go get a USB headset, which has everything switched internally, which I actually have the, uh, the, the one more one there, and there's an A40 there, but we're not going to talk about those yet. Um, so the only way to avoid having problems with ground loops and having two separate devices to handle microphone and a good headphone output is to have a device that has a good headphone output and a microphone input. So the ARC was one of the first ones I had played with. I think this might have been out before that, and I think the GSX-1000 was probably out around the same time. But it's, you know, JDS, it's, it's Mayflower. It's Mayflower, JDS, that, that's sort of like good, you know, O2 build quality, ODAC quality, optical in, uh, USB, then it has a mic out loop in case you want to just... So what this means is you could plug in a headset, like a, like a DIY headset. I'm not talking about like a Razer headset. I'm talking about one that you actually craft out of good things. This microphone adapter is the Boom Pro, the Vmoto Boom Pro. This microphone adapter is like the Sans Musica or something, and it fits specifically into either the Sennheiser line or the Audio-Technica line, like the M40s and such. And there it is. So if you were to create your own headset like this or this, or this, but to a different level, we'll get to that later. Um, you're pretty much, you have to buy something like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, to keep any from issues from happening. And obviously this is everything here, I'm pointing, put my finger down, everything here, I'm blatantly here, but everything here is still better than most gaming headsets that you could just buy. From any company that, if a, here's, here's, the, here's the rule of thumb, you ready? Ready for the rule of thumb? If your company that made your headphones can al also makes a keyboard, you have a shit headphone. That's just, I'm just, it's probably gonna be broken at some point in the future. Someone who makes a keyboard is also gonna make a good headphone and it's gonna be like, oh, we're gonna have a fucking party. But until that day, look at your keyboard, read the name on it, then look at your headphones, and read the name of it, and if they're the same, 
Well, I feel bad for you. So, what's on the desk? The best connectivity. See this thing? You see this thing? I bought this after I bought this. See this thing? Hold that. So, GSX-1000 is the Sennheiser gaming device. It's just a device. You touch it. Oh, wait till I get to the... This is $37. It's Sibisonic, which is the same company who makes the guts for the Origin. If you look up the Origin, and you look up there's a Sibisonic that looks exactly like the Origin, Micah just took it, tweaked it, sells it. They tweaked it in the right way, they did good changes, and they sell it. But the actual start, the blueprint, came from Sibisonic. So this is a legit Sibisonic that hasn't been rebranded. And for 37 fucking dollars? Are you shitting me? So here's what we got. A knob. The top is just a, it's just a knob. It's just a knob on top. And this is a DAC amp with a microphone input. This is a DAC amp with a microphone input. This is a DAC amp with a microphone input. And this son of a bitch is a class A amp with a microphone input. And it's just hot, very hot it gets. Now it's $37. So I want you to put into your mind that we've got three, well, I'd even call it four steps. I'm gonna put the arc sort of in the class sort of like here or even a little bit like here as far as sound quality goes. If we wanna talk about sound quality, it's $37. Take a pick on how would you think. I can hear a difference if I plug headphones into this and I plug headphones into the Sennheiser or if I plug headphones into this and then into this and then into that, it's just, it's up. But but if all you're doing is gaming, because here's the thing, I'm testing this shit with high fidelity music tracks that I, you know, this is my job, is high fidelity music. If you're gaming, maybe the fidelity of like Doom or Squad isn't lost on you because it's a video game. There's nothing to compare. It's not like, hmm, no one with a beard sits there and strokes their beard and goes, yes, the reverb in this tunnel when that AK-47 fires, the, the ringing, it's splashy. The highs are too splashy. And no one does that. So, I mean, I, I probably do that. But the point is, it is okay to take a slight hit on fidelity to have a user-friendly, compatible gaming setup that, uh, frankly, uh, shit, for the money, that, <laughs> that's the review. Zeo Spantera, what did he say? Dash, shit. So $37 buys you what? $37 buys you USB in only, okay? So I'm not a huge fan of USB, but <laughs> if you're running a microphone, you have to have it. In other words, this has fiber optic input, this Mayflower Arc has fiber optic input. But if you plug a microphone into it, microphone can't come out of the fiber optic and go into your, that won't work. So it has to be USB. Or you have to use the mic out to another device and it just shares the ground and it's okay. The point is, they're all USB input. And I, they, does it need drivers? I don't remember if this needed drivers. It just worked when I plugged it into this laptop, unless I had it into the laptop already. And then the person just doesn't care. But, um. These are all simple devices. They're, 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 as complicated as I thought this son of a bitch would, would be, it's not. And this is the model of simplicity. The model of it. So on the back, remember I was talking about the back of this unit? This is how, this is how Z reviews end up being an hour and a half long. USB input, it's a mini, not a micro, which some people actually prefer and I'm, I'm okay with that. You get two digital outputs. Now, in the world of Zio's talking about shit. That's interesting because once you have a fiber optic output, or in this case, a coaxial digital and a fiber optic output, which is a little strange why they have both on such a small device, you could bounce this out into a good, I'm going to say good, I'm going to say more expensive DAC amp. So I could bounce this out in, into the old DAC, bounce it out into the UN, bounce it out into my damn Emotiva, into the Sanskrit. I could bounce it out and do other things with it and then just keep this for gaming. Or you could, I don't know if it'll pass through surround sound, but it's nice to have the option. Then you get these two RCAs, <laughs> which are labeled line out, and that is a lie. I should get a magic marker and fix it, because these are pre-outs. And I think you have line outs. This is the only unit on the desk that actually has true line outs. So if you don't know the difference, it means when you plug this in and you send music to it, you lower the volume down from your headphones, the RCAs are outputting just full all time. 
This volume knob does nothing, full time, just line out. So that would be you'd loop this around to a, another amplifier with a knob, speaker amplifier, anything you want, and that's fine. Pre-outs require things like powered monitors that, or, well, a power amp, but mostly powered monitors. So you would, and in this case, I do have the ability to hook it up, and since I'm talking about it, and I'm gonna unplug you. So if you plug in like this, and this wiring schematic is gonna blow your minds because I have, that's fine. I'm a professional, this is what I do. So now, both will play. If I play music, and I'm coming off of this because it's Windows 10 and everything just went in fast. Both the headphones and the speakers are playing. So, that could be fine. It just, it's unfortunate that I have to unplug the headphones, which we'll get to the, I guess we gotta switch to the front. Interesting unit, quarter inch headphone out. Now I'm not a, I don't, don't let me think that all oh, quarter inch is better because it sounds better. No, no, no. Quarter inch doesn't break. And if you buy like TH100, X100s, Fostex X100s, they only have a quarter inch. So instead of using a stupid adapter, you can plug right into that. Then next to that quarter inch, there's a three and a half millimeter headphone out. So you could literally do that with an adapter. Oh, unplug it. There's your microphone input. Here's a line input. So if you wanted to plug in you know, a DAC or a portable player or something, you literally can. And then it'll it'll feed into this. And then there's a switch to the left. So plug the microphone back in. Let's plug the headphones back in. Here's a switch. T, D, and B. All right? Top is T, middle is D, bottom is B. I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds to figure out what T, D, and B are on that three-way switch. Give up. T, D, and B, come on, T, D, B. Too late. The D in the middle stands for direct. The T stands for treble boost, and the B stands for bass boost. So it's actually got an equalizer on it. And in the world of gaming, that's nice. Because it could either fix your headphones or if a game is not doing it for you, you could flip a switch. Now direct is what I always leave things on. And I'll tell you, when you flip that switch, if you want more treble, oh, you get it. You fucking get it, you motherfucking get that treble. In fact, I don't think it works. Oh, it does work. I didn't think it worked. How did I not test that yesterday? Anyway, so yeah, this pretty much just like... More treble. Less treble. More bass. Less bass. So you get... You got the swing. It's nice having a bass boost on, on a, a little tiny, like I used to love the Fio E10K simply because it had a bass boost. I'd play games, I'd have my neutral headphones, I'd enjoy them, HM5s, and then I'd go and I wanna play Arma, and then missiles are going off. I'm like, you know what those missiles need to make my brain hurt? Flip on the bass boost. So you get that with this. So for $37, I guarantee of all the things I'm reviewing, this will sell the most. Even if I tell you the fidelity in music is not as good as this or that, for 37 fucking dollars, if you go to LAN parties, you could buy this, someone could steal it, and you go, oh, I have three more in my glove compartment. It's, uh. so now what is it hooked up to? These are the 579s, and whatever that Neo Musica, I think it's Neo Musica microphone adapter, and they all come with these stupid boxes, and I hate this, because there's a, a volume thing on here that if you forget to turn it up, you're gonna crank your amp, and you're like, why is my volume so quiet? and they clip on, and I would just take it without that. But, what is the total overall cost? Overall cost of the setup is like $120, $120, $130? I don't even know what the 579s are going for anymore. But, more bass. Oh, see, now that's, a, there's the issue, is that I, I can't make the speakers not go unless I literally unplug this or powered off the speakers. So it's a little bit like, mm, you, you almost got it. And if you didn't notice, by the way, it's got that same uh, VU LED, which is a blue LED and a red LED that when the left and right channels, accordingly, are on, it will blink and it turns purple because it's the same thing that the um, Micro Origin has. So, um, is this worth $37? Fuck yeah, it is, buddy. It's just a little bit like, 
it needs it needs to cost fifty five dollars. It needs to have a switch on top that shuts off the line outs, the pre outs, so that your speakers don't go on. And it needs to have or or just picks. It needs to have a switch to pick. I want the back to go out. I want the front to go out. I want the back to go out. I want the front to go out. And it could use a little tweak of the either the DAC or the amp. It's probably the DAC. It, it powers headphones pretty well. None of these, of all, here's, here's ready for this. Of all four of these, the Sennheiser's the weakest. So of actual being able to push hard to drive headphones, the Sennheiser is the weakest. Now that's a class A Burson, so fuck you, that thing's gonna win. But the, you know, the Mayflower Arc is, is designed to be a good headphone amp. And this, even though it's cheap, has a solidly powerful headphone amp it just isn't the highest quality. So now, I, I've sold you this. This thing is sold. People are, people are gonna buy this in droves because it's good enough for gaming. And if you, ha if you don't have exceedingly high expectations for $37, it's good enough for music too. You got a little... Okay, we're moving on. And uh, by the way, I picked some of these headphones specifically because gaming involved and uh, they're pretty damn good. So keep, keep these all things in mind. Keep in mind. So let's unplug this. Fun. Let's talk about the Sennheiser. I almost want to skip it. I almost want to skip it and talk about the Burson. But it's the next one on the table, so we're going to talk about it. This is the finest piece of design of a product I've reviewed on this channel. And if you go, I've been, I've, I've been to the, ch to the, I've been all around. I went to the Sennheiser site, and indeed it did win an award in 2017 for design. And holy shit, does it deserve it. My only qualm about this unit is that it's designed for gaming. If Sennheiser put this much effort into a similarly priced, just audiophile product, I, I, I cum my pants. So I'm gonna unplug everything but the power. And we're gonna look at it. Let me close that so it sits flat. Close it so it sits flat. Let me wait for that, all this to like fade away. Could, could you fade out now? I'm done touching you. Give it a second. Give it a second. Anyway, the back of the unit. Now there's a 1000 and a 1200. I'll tell you the differences. I'll tell you there's no extra power. I said this is lacking in pushing power. And, well, the 1200 is the exact same amplifier. Sorry, she was staring into my soul. Um, you have three outputs in the back. Headphone out, picture of headphone. Microphone in, picture of a microphone. Speaker out, picture of speakers. So let's plug in the speakers. That's, I'm a professional, doing a professional job. Fuck. Um... That's headphone. And by the way, these adapters, these wide splitters are not the ones that come with the V-Moda or that. I bought like a three pack because I kept losing mine. And it's nice to know they're available. So I'll link those in the description as well. So what the fuck are we looking at? Where's the, what's this front? Anything on the front? No. Anything on this side? No. And on this side? Yes. There's a, there's a, um, a rubberized, what do I call this? Adjustment knob. It, it, it rolls up. It rolls in the middles and goes click in, and it rolls down, and it's rubberized, and it's a little picture of a speech bubble. And I'm gonna switch this over to be the one that's being used. Thank you. And weeb stuff. Can't get the weeb stuff. We're talking about gamers. Gamers don't like weeb things. Or they don't think they do until they watch this video. Um, so what are we looking at? What is this? What it, so this is Sennheiser's basically award-winning gaming device. Um, so it's a DAC amp, preamp, with DSP controls and effects. And it's driverless, and it's the sexiest fucking thing I've ever seen. So... What's that sound? I don't wanna hear this on speakers. I wanna hear it on my headphones. Okay, touch button. Speakers, headphones. What is that? What are you doing? What am I doing? That it's I... on. 
nobody's right if everybody's wrong. I don't want to get pulled. So, okay. So, right off the bat, none of the units here, none, most of the units I've reviewed, except for the Fostex HP3 and 4A, have just like, or, or the Micro Origin, have the ability to speakers, headphones, th th that's, please, please give me that. Please, please, ceiling fan. I see people all the time in movies, they look at their ceiling fan and they beg it to do things. I don't understand how that's how that's a thing. But okay, let's, let me put on, and these are the uh, Philips Fidelio X1s, which are my choice for fun as fuck gaming cans. You'd get, end up getting the X2s, which have a higher headband and a little more bass. I'm running them off the, uh, I'm running them with v Moto Boom Pro, which is a singular three and a half millimeter with mic. And to get these loud, let's see, with this song, which is a well-recorded song, 90 out of 100. So that's where it's sort of like, mmm. Always afraid. And the man comes. And take you away. Okay, I'm, now I'm just jamming the music. Let's get to the actual functionality of this motherfucker. Because there's some stuff that we need to talk about. In this ba most bass mode, we've got headphones selected, we've got no EQ, we've got no voice feedback, and we've got it in 2.0 mode. This is basically, it's a headphone amp DAC, it's just like any other ones you could buy, just like the Origin. It's just, that's it. It's stereo, and it's headphones, and the headphones are in the back. I was against everything being in the back, because this has in the front, it's kind of nice, but when you really get it set up, if you were to route your cables permanently, like around things, so you didn't have to see them, oof, oof, sex, oof, sex. Say it with me, people. Hashtag oof, sex. So, equalizer. Do I want to get to the equalizer now? No, I'm going to get to this button first, which is the button that lets you hear yourself through the microphone with no lag which some gamers need to talk. So you could either put on one, one positive, one plus, or three. It doesn't go one, two, three, it goes one, and then it shows two, but it keeps the first one on, so it's three. So now I can hear myself talking, which isn't weird at all, because I'm Zeos and I have to watch all my videos, so this is perfectly fine. So that's what this does. Now, this, I wish I, I, I can never get this to actually like, if you're doing like a chat thing, you could blend. And on the 1200 model, there are two additional ports in the back that are two and a half millimeter designed so you could literally daisy chain these things one after the other. So that you could have team communications in a physical space without any Ventrilo or Discord or TeamSpeak, none of that. It'll actually just jump through. It's more money and that's the only thing it adds because it's not more powerful, all the specs will stay the same. So. Oh, it's like a shuffle sign. All right. Switch to speakers. Now, when you're on speakers, you can only choose 2.0. When you're on headphones, you could change it up. Let me get back to basics. All right. Headphones selected, 2.0. Leaving it on there for a second. The equal equalizer has four settings. Nothing, with is neutral, which is just, every, what you get is what you got. Then there's this logo. I keep fucking it up. There's that logo, which is a crosshair, which for some reason in the actual manual of the GSX claims to be uh, music, story, or esports. Is off music, story, or esports. No, it ain't. That's shoot people in the face mode. Why do I even have that up? Because that's just there to be pretty today. So you get a crosshair, a musical note, and a, a one of those clappers that they start a movie with. So in my mind, that's gamey, gamey, shoot face mode, music, and movie mode. And from extensive listening, and you can switch these on with speakers, and I will do that now. Let me get another song other than Geschaffelstein on. Beatles got me pulled. Dexter might get me pulled. Full Metal Alchemist will get me pulled. Frozen OST will get me pulled. Sherlock Holmes, the end. I don't know if you're able to hear it. Normal? 
Shooty shooty, no bass gamer mode. Obviously music means you love bass, because beat cell mode. And then movie mode, which is much harder to make out. So, I'll describe the equalization settings. The very first one, shooty shooty crosshair mode, is an insult to anybody who knows audio, but gamers probably jerk off to it. Because what happens is, and this is gonna be part of my gaming, gamers in general review, kills the bass, the, the, the crosshair mode kills the bass, gone, it's gone. Since you don't need that, you don't need that to hear footsteps. Cranks the treble and just sharpens the shit out of everything. It's like sizzling. Anything you listen to, and you listen to music and that comes on, it's all bad. So th that's what makes this a gamer unit, is that it can actually put on a mode that makes things terrible. It makes every headphone you're wearing, including my beautiful bassy X1s, into sizzling treble hot boxes of death. Death for me. I don't know if my opponents will die. I can't even play games with it on there. But I'm sure some of you are going to be like, oh, I need that. I need that specific option. Give me. The second mode, music. Um, Dr. Dre obviously designed that with Sennheiser in a co-production of um, just stop. Stop. Because it's there, for music, you should have no EQ. Then you should have a bass boost EQ if you're going to call it music. Because when you put on the music, it is... Every song is Kashafelstein now. It's just bass. Fucking bass. So, like, you switch that off, and then you go to the movie mode. And the movie mode took me a while to figure out, like, what... Because it sounds like there's a little more treble and a little more bass. But they murder ball the, the mid-range. There's no vocals. It almost could be karaoke mode. So, essentially, the equalizer is useless for me for me as a person who knows how things are supposed to sound if you gave me just tone controls maybe when i'm playing a game maybe i would turn the bass up just just a little bit just so explosions if i have sort of neutral headphones really rock me just like this has treble bass or nothing and this has only tre i mean only tre at least when you put on the treble boost in this there's still low end when you put on the tr that fucking crosshair mode exactly the you should be doing this devil devil but you know what i'm not a competitive gamer i don't know what you people want i just know what good sound sounds like and competitive gamers may put that shit on and just be like worship to the treble gods everything sounds like dt 990s all right go watch me drink liquor or nearly drink liquor with that Ugh. music mode is just incredible bait not even a little bit of bass boost a little bit a lot of bit of bass boost and then movie mode is like murder mid-range, because who the hell needs that in movies? You don't need to hear clearly. So basically you're gonna leave it on direct if you're smart. Oh, listen to that. Listen to it. Now listen to it. And then you can't really hear the mid-range is gone, and then neutral is fine. Just put that back to my headphones. Okay, so let's say you see this mode we're on, headphone, no equi no equalizer, no feedback, 2.0. See these four lights around the outside? I'm gonna hold that one down. See it turned white? Now it's set. These four things are presets. Because there's so many options and so many ways you can configure this that you can literally just... My only issue with it is I do that and it like loads a preset. Like there. That's the everything preset. And that's the nothing preset. And that's the speaker 2.0 preset. And that's the headphone 2.0 with hearing my voice. And we could put, let's put some of this on. Actually, it makes it 7.1, but we'll shut that off. Uh, yeah, there we go. So now I, I want to set that one. And there it's set. So please, Sennheiser, make the, take the design. I feel like, here's, I thought of this yesterday. I feel like if Z Reviews is still a thing in 2030, this is what I'm gonna be reviewing. Everything will be this. It won't be this, it won't be, it's gonna be this fucking, you know, Blade Runner 2049-esque, beautiful flat surfaces with touch. It'll just be a holographic thing that comes up. I, I wish I could recommend this for people who aren't gamers. Like if you're just like, I wish it was so good, so fucking good that I could just recommend it to anyone. But, I'll close the bottom thing. Just, just, 
the fact that it has like a tilt thing. That, it's not powerful enough. It's clearer. It's much, it sounds good. It sounds equally as good as any hundred to $150 DAC amp combo I've ever recommended. It's not powerful enough to push like AKG 712s. It's like, it's there, but it's like, mm, it just needs more. And then you'd have to go and you'd have to buy a legit amplifier. The only way you could solve the power issue with this is you gotta go out and you gotta buy a legit amplifier. So something like the X7S or even, I wish I still had my Magni 3, but I sold it in a yard sale. By the way, yard sales on the Patreon when I sell things. If you had a Magni 3 and you literally went from the microphone output of, from the headphone output of this into the back of the Magni 3 and then plug into the Magni 3, uh, two things would happen. One, you'd ruin the fact that you can use a headset thing like I have because you'd be breaking it apart into two different locations just like I explained before. But you'd have, you'd have to set the Magni and then use your amazing volume control. Which is, a, this is an actual spinning ring by the way. And is that Westworld? Oh my God, it's Westworld. I can't wait. So this is a this is an actual metal spinning ring, and everything's touch controlled, and everything here is touch controlled. I have to keep going over what's on the screen because this is a 50 minute review already. So you get to choose headphones or speakers there. You get to choose only treble. Treble is your god. Footsteps are your god mode. Bassy, bassy, bass music mode, or I don't like mid range mode. Then you have the the, the next big choice is down here. So this one will feed back my voice. I could hear myself talking right now when I have that on. What the hell just happened? Oh, I, wait. What happened? Did I change modes? Why'd that go away? What's even, oh, I can switch back to speakers. It, it's doing, I switch back to speakers. So hear myself, because you can't force your own voice through speakers. That'd be a feedback nightmare. Anyway, so headphone speaker, equalizer, which is useless. Then feedback mic to yourself mode, which is, I guess I could understand it. I like listening to the sound of my voice. Don't you guys? I mean, you have to. And then the choice between 2.0 and 7.1. So let's talk about that now. Because I've made big bitching fucking comments about 7.1 headphones are bullshit. And they are still. They, to this moment, if someone says you tells you they have a 7.1 head, headset with multiple, dri with multiple drivers in it, it's bullshit. However... Are you ready for the however? Here's what's going on. This is a USB device. You plug this device in with this red cable, and I kind of wish it went with a black cable, because it's such a sleek thing, and then there's fucking red monsters behind it. So I would buy a regular cable and not use the red one, because it doesn't like, uh, shut up. You plug it in, and it comes up as a sound device that is capable of either stereo or 7.1. You have the option in Windows. And when you set it to stereo, you listen to music in stereo and everything stereo. When you set it to 7.1, the game or movie or whatever you're watching on your computer or playing on your computer will output eight different audio channels, specifically eight audio channels, to this device. And then this device decides where to how to make that sound in your headphones. So stereo headphones, two, two speakers, that's all we're talking about. These X1s are a fucking prime example of what is capable with the right DSP and mixing. So... <sighs> I'm, I'm tasting it, hold on, because it does sound really good through this. Bach sounds good through this. And these are easy to drive headphones, or else this would be much harder to do. So you set it to 2.0, you get stereo, like you always have. You set it to 7.1, and you get Two more lights come on. This one is directivity front or directivity back or directivity neutral. And then you get this son of a bitch, which is reverb essentially. It's, it's room size. At least it explains it as room size. And you get again the one plus or three pluses. But putting it just in 7.1 while in a game, I can tell you makes a difference. Because here's the deal. When you're listening to just stereo, through just stereo, through just stereo, through stereo, stereo, for headphones, your headphones play left and right, and they use psychoacoustics, uh, virtual barbershop. Everyone, know, pause the video right here, and type in the address, well, don't lose this tab, but type in the thing, virtual barbershop. 
and you'll find one and you'll hear a guy buzz your head and if you're wearing headphones you'll hear him go around into the back and it's like oh you only need stereo but when you give eight channels of directional audio to a device and that device's specific purpose is to take what it knows is rear channel because that's the thing when you do stereo the game is up to, the game has to do the, the thing that fakes it to make it sound like it. when you give it something and say here the sound of this buzzing is behind the user do as you please then sennheiser who is not nobody in the world of audio takes that buzzing sound and they they fuck with it to make it sound out of phase and behind I am duly impressed with the seven point, and I would say point one processing, but it's really seven channel surround processing. Point one is just bass. So they could take a, a bass track though, that if, if you had your game hooked up to a 7.1 surround sound, you could literally walk to a speaker and go, what's playing out of the speaker? Oh, okay. Now how do we make that sound like it's coming from a headphone? That's what Sennheiser did. And then you could, you could twist it even further and you can say, you can modify, I want, you know, I'm in the surround environment, I got rear channels going on, but I want everything to sort of be moved in front of me. And that's what that switch does, where you pick the arrow either front or back or in the middle. So I want bias front or I want bias rear for some games that don't have enough rear channel. A lot of games I've, I've found with surround sound just play it safe. And it's sort of like it's 80% front, 20% rear, and you want to push that back. You want to get a more immersive sound. So I'm, 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 I'm I'm okay with this sort of 7.1 in gaming in headphones. I'm okay with it. Because they're not they're not claiming that there's nine drivers in here and one's here. Although I have those one more is that I absolutely fucking love that have two drivers, but they're on a that's a separate thing. I game with these headphones in 7.1 mode on this. I don't listen to music like that because then it sounds a little weird because it's a stereo source being broken apart because your computer's like, I'm in surround sound now. I don't know what to do. I'm going to make all these channels go everywhere. So it's like, why would you take a stereo track, break it into eight pieces, and then try to put it back together into two speak... 2.0 for music. 2.0 for music. Literally two... I, I was just going to say, there's nothing else I would keep this in 2.0 mode for except for just plain music. 7.1 mode in this is fucking phenomenal. Now, unfortunately, you can... Can I switch that? See, no, you, once you're on the line out for the speakers, you, that's it, you're, 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 you're 2.0. But if I'm listening to fucking this and it's like... Ugh. It's fun. And you know what the best part? I didn't tell you all the best part. I didn't tell you all the best part. I've done this whole review and I'm talking about the design. There's no drivers. There's no drivers. I plug this into that. There's no software to load. There's no adjustments. It's just plug it in. It's a sound device. And then you could in Windows, through the Windows picker say, do you want it to be a stereo device or a surround sound device? Because sometimes when you set something to 7.1 in Windows, Windows acts a little weird. Things will never sound right. Like YouTube videos always try to be surround sound. But then you could still mux it down. So you, you basically, I was scared. To, I bought this five months ago and I looked at it for two months and went, I don't want to deal with the software suite to install that and get it to work with surrounds. Up. There is nothing. There's nothing. You plug it in and it fucking works. That's unheard of. Plug it in and it works. What is this? A communist country? That That's not how that's supposed to work. It's supposed to be fucking a nightmare. I'm used to nightmares. I want nightmares. Give me my nightmares back. So, what a beautiful piece, just to fuck, look, mm, mm, mm. I don't want reverb, I don't want 7.1 because I'm listening to music, oh, let's make it sound like shit, oh, let's make it too bassy, let's make it have no mid-range, I can't, I, I was getting ready, I was ready to knock this thing, just fucking knock it, and I can't. G games doom fucking squad i play a little bit of goddamn planet side 2 is still like i have a i have a jetpack all right you show me another game with a jetpack that i have a jetpack that i got to fly over people turn around and throw a grenade and then fly away 
then I'll play that game. But until then, Planets I do has fucking jetpacks. This thing doesn't suck. It's actually cheaper now than when I bought it. I bought it, it was like $229 for the 1000 Now it's like 170 So that's the benefit of waiting five months for one of my reviews. Please, Sennheiser. Take whoever designed this. Give them one of these in a back alley and tell them to design one that's for like just audiophilia. Because then imagine if it just had slight EQ tweaks. Or, or it could do crossfeed. Or you could hit a button and then use the knob to adjust different. Like, I want to adjust the treble this or have a seven band EQ. Oh, and then save your presets. And then, oh, and then have a line out. Or, oh. I clapped at it, all right? The only thing that's a negative in this is it doesn't... Well, the, the only negative is, is that the fucking EQs are for gamers only, and that the headphone amp is not that powerful. It's powerful enough for, like, I'd say 65 70% of all the headphones you're going to want to use in it. But if Mark III's come out, or T60s, or anything harder to drive than, like, not, it's lacking a bit. Feels good. Feels good to get that finally out of my system because it's mm, it's so pretty. Like you could see, this is thirty seven dollars compared to that, which is a hundred and something dollars. But I mean, t t it's just stereo. You you know what you're paying for at least. So let's switch now. Please don't break because it broke last time. It broke. It fucking broke. The parameter is incorrect. Did you know that the parameter is incorrect with the person? I love USB. USB my favorite. Actually, I'm just going to power this off and then back on again. Click, click, mofo. Do I have to pause the video? I hate pausing the video. So we need to get, we need to get to the, um, the big, the big bad over here. We gotta restart foobar. That's always a good start to anything I review. Unrecoverable playback here with parameters incorrect. Uh, let's try this. And uh, I guess this has part of the review in it because did the person need drivers now? The nothing. Nothing. I plugged in this laptop. This laptop was. I tried this on uh, my other computer, and I think I tried this on the other on my gaming computer when I took it to uh, Magfest. And this is just well, just is. All right, let me try, let's try th this. No, wait, is it not even here anymore? Burp. In a weird twist of fate, for some reason, the burst in play is like direct sound. Paha, <laughs> I only want to be pushed with wasabi push. So now we're on wasabi push. Um, <coughs> most expensive thing here. Over five hundred dollars, over five hundred dollars. So, does it have more features than the Sennheiser? No, 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 it doesn't. Does it have more connectivity options? No, than the thirty-seven dollar? No, it does not. Why is it on a CD drive? Well, you see, I like Burson. I really like Burson. It's got a good reputation. They made those Cable Plus amplifiers, and their quality, and they were expensive, and people were like. Mm. But they made a little amp, and I think Burson's about 12 years too late with this. Here's why. I brought out a CD. This is my CD, by the way. I have a, um, what brand are you even? DVD writer? You haven't even have a brand? I don't know. Toshiba. Boom. And I keep this in a drawer, and I have a little adapter if I want to use it. Because no, does your computer have a CD drive in it? Look at me, gamers. Does your computer have a CD DVD reader in it anymore in 2018? No? No, it doesn't. In 2003, if this came out, I would have just, my erection would have been uncontrollable because it's a high end class A microphone inputting quarter inch retardo op amp swappable headphone out that is built into a chassis designed to slide into five and a quarter inch bay of your computer. 
Okay. Remember when people used to put bays in their computers? It was cool. USB input, power input, which is a, a, a power brick down there, or there's your Molex connector for putting it inside your computer. Here's your power switch, which by the way, is fucking upside down. And it's been annoying me since I got it. And I'm gonna yell at it now for about fucking three minutes. So just skip ahead in this video for three fucking minutes. Cause there's a, there's a code people that up is on, not down is on. Why would down ever be on? Up is on. Fuv. And then pre-outs. Just like we've had pre-outs on this, pre-outs on this. And where's my wires? We're going to plug into pre-outs on this. And now I know what you're saying. Well, Zeos, what good is having all this shit inside a computer? Well, I haven't taken the accessories down. So hold on. Here's... The, the normal power plug for the power brick, I just had my own, apparently. And here is uh, your normal USB cable, and here is a not normal USB cable designed to go on your header of your actual motherboard. So you could plug this in internally inside your computer. They went for this. This is, this is 2003 porn. 2000, I'll even give it up to like 2006 or seven. Would have been like, what? Do you see my five and a quarter inch with the knob? And we had those fan controllers that all flashed LEDs. Not anymore. And so here is a really like Burson level set of RCAs. Like, oh my fucking, like this is heavy. Look at the connectors on these. Phallix, Palix, P-A-I-L-I-C-C-S. Look at the fucking quality of that RCA, all right? What are these for? Well, those are so you can take the line outs that I just plugged into on the back of it and plug it, oh, don't rip it. Plug it into your pass through on your on your slot in the back of your computer. They're, they went for it. This is this is called going for it. I, I remember when I built the Zeos Pantera, which is where my name comes from. I found a Micron PC Zeos Pantera Pentium 90 case and I'm like, all my friends are modifying cases because I used to get Maxim PC and the back of the Maxim PC was the rig of the month. I'm like, I'm gonna win rig of the month. I never did. But uh, I took that case and I modified it and I painted it and I cut it and I put a hinge on it and it was awesome. And I would have absolutely died to have full like RCA outputs on the back of it. And it comes with a quarter inch, comes with a little Allen key. It comes with the screws to mount it, little feet if you don't want to mount it. This, this, this is, um. In the comments, if you've made it this far into the video, because it's very long, and I'll have to skip to each individual thing. Do you actually still use a five and a quarter? A, do you still use a five and a quarter at all? At all in your computer? Because I don't, in both of mine. Even my last home theater PC never had a five and a quarter in it. Because I just, I take, the very few times I need a CD burner, I take a raw drive and I have an adapter and then I plug it in USB and then I burn a CD and then I take that all and I shove it in a drawer. Because it's like USB keys exist and cloud storage exists and who fuck buys physical media anymore. But um, I guess that means there's plenty of free space for one of these. If you do, you still use a five and a quarter, and would you mount this in there or would you just use it on a desk like you're going to? Let me unplug the speakers. Mm, let's see if I could do this without making the loudest noise on earth. Ah. Okay. Back to. So this $500, this $500 Burson has a very similar problem to this $37 Sibisonic, where that the pre-outs in the back, and they are adjustable pre-outs obviously, are on. Even with headphones plugged in, they're on. Unplug the headphones, they're still on. They never are not on, and that's still running. So now I've got and you, you like the way I, I've scaled up. I went from five, seven, nines with the cheapo and like my X1s, my vintage brown leather. Mm, I love you. X1s with the Sennheiser. And then I got, went fucking balls to the walls, boys. Ether C flows for the class A Burson play. Now I'm, I'm playing. Battery died. Too many Canadian boxing unboxings. Anyway, what did I say? I kissed those. 
I talked about how this is like the cheaper gray, everything's gray and silver. Then with this one, it's like, a, mm, it's just, this is like the happy butter zone of gaming and headphones and yes. And this is the, I live in a fantasy land, you know, $1,800 closed planars, which by the way, for gaming, you can't, like, fucking can't. And oh, I'm, and now I don't have, so here's the thing. Why does this exist? I understand why it exists. It exists because gamers are a market that's untapped. That's why the Odyssey Mobius is out. The Odyssey Mobius and the one more Scathe Dragon. I don't remember the name of those goddamn one mores and I bought them. But companies are trying to get into... Companies that make just audio stuff are seeing... They're going to lands like Fights and Magfest and they're seeing seas of retards. And I'm, I'm, I apologize for calling everyone that's at those that, but you're wearing LED fucking headsets all the fucking time, and pe your, people are charging you a million dollars for them, and you're buying them, and you're fucking buying them, and they're just they're seeing all these dollar signs sit there with stupid headsets on. They're like, we could do that, but here's the thing: Burson is not a name that people who game and just game are gonna know. But they might hear about this, maybe from a video like this or someone else. And they go, is that the best for gaming? And someone will go, well, it's, uh, yes, I'll go. Uh, well, I don't know if I'll go yes for gaming. But let me tell you what, on this desk, on this, in this area, this Class A motherfucker is a good DAC amp. Really good. Like it's a $500 plus dollar person. Are you kidding me? And they see the potential to sell it to people who don't normally buy audiophile gear. And they're going to get something. They're going to get... They're getting literally the only thing that this has different. Or and this has different, and this has different, and this has different, is this microphone inputs on it. So th this is a solid unit. I, I could listen to my headphones on it all fucking day. The question is... Sorry, I have to, um, there we go. I'm like, why does it sound so boomy? Oh, that's why. I'm listening to some very, very not. <sighs> there's no DSP corrections. There's no EQs. There's no twisting of anything. There's no fun stuff that, it's got blue in the front. It's got a, you can mute it, you can unmute it. The back, you saw the back is just, I mean, the the only thing that Burson has going for it now is this will mount in a five and a quarter. I like Burson, I really do. And I think they, they don't have lazy engineers. I just don't think they could put forth the effort and monies to make something like this with even close to the feature set that the Sennheiser monstrosity has on it. You can put on here. Let's just I'll put my pre. There you go. Preset. Put my preset on. And, and this is like a third the cost of this. But this is a this is a monster headphone amp. We forget about the fact that it even f says play and is for gaming. And I'm review this on its own as a just desktop. Here it is. Here's a desktop solution. It just happens to have a microphone input, which I do have, or at least I had that open. So you could see how all the microphones were working. Does that really matter to you people? I mean, I'm not gonna start making recording samples where it's like, ha, yeah. All the, all the mic, all three microphones are currently being input to my laptop and they're all working. What do you, what's, I don't know the point of this one. It's so expensive. $500 for audio for a gamer is too much. Too much for, for, for this style of thing. I have no problem with you going out and getting LCD 2Cs. Spend $800 on, on headphones. Because you could run those on this or that. I mean, they'd sound best on this, but there's places where gamers need to spend their money and it isn't in this. And the question was, would I recommend this for just desktop use for audiophiles or people who are just in audio? It doesn't have enough features. This button shouldn't mute it. This press should turn on and off the pre-outs. That's what that press should do. It should click a little relay and then these don't work. And uh, 
I don't like unplugging things. And one of the bullet points that Sennheiser put on there on the, for the GS is you don't need to unplug anything, you flip the switch. That's going to win in my category every time. Because now if I want to listen to speakers, I have to unplug my headphones and then drop it somewhere. And then I can. And then the worst part is, well, now I want to listen to just the headphones. And what are you supposed to do? You either have to turn off your powered monitors or whatever. You're, it's going to be powered monitors 80% of the time because you're using a pre-out. It means you have adjustable. You're going to have to turn something off away with power. That's no, no. I'll give it to this one. Fine. You know, you have it. You don't have a switch here. I want a $37 thing to have a switch. So it costs 50. You're fucking 500 plus dollars. Why don't you have that switch? Why don't you have that switch? It has a remote control. I didn't even get to that part. So... I mean, you can take this, which is, by the way, I really do like this form factor. Again, not enough buttons. It's mute and volume up and down. So I can adjust and mute. Would I do my headphones with this? Probably not. But I, I could certainly do the speakers if the speakers, well, now that that's unplugged, I can put the speakers back on. That's a slam and jam right up in here. Hey, look, you can hold it down and it, it, it lowers it fully. Hey, audio god, pay attention. This is how remote controls are supposed to work. Also, um, one thing I want to point out is it, the knob goes from 0 to 99. And it's so powerful that most things, like the loudest I got it with headphones was 50. The loudest I got it with speakers was like 35. And I have these speakers on less sensitivity which actually that one's a 305p and that's an LSR 305 because I was checking for hum and there's the other 305p. Don't worry about it. Um, again, Burson is about 12 years too late for me to be excited about a five and a quarter inch gaming power house. It's a class A, it's the same it's class A like that with that built in, but it doesn't have the connectivity of that. It's only USB and it's got pre but you can't switch. And I wasn't sure if I was going to give this a bad review, but sitting here in the final moments thinking about it, it's like, well, who the fuck is buying this then? Because there's better solutions for this money for a desk and gamers, if you're going to go for full stupid gaming, this has more of the stupid gaming things you want. And if you can't afford that or this, well, most people aren't going to think about buying this, but if you can't afford this, guess what? For $37, you buy this, and you buy a pair of these, and you buy this wire, and you're good. You could buy, you could collect this, you could give that to someone as a Christmas gift. All three things. Here you go. Now you're a gamer. Or, and I knew this was going to be my final thought of the video, because I'm done now. I can tell you how good it is, and how the microphone is in here, and the mod mic. The final thought of this video is, all of this shit is irrelevant except for the surround sound options on this. All this shit is irrelevant if you just use a desktop microphone. There's my Lux Pro right there. I have a, I have a, a interface, a little cheap Behringer interface back there, and a Lux Pro that was 50 bucks, and that was like 40 bucks. And if you have a microphone that sits in your desk and not on your head, that that's where all this shit is spawned from people who, ha this is it. Gamers obviously have to have a microphone in front of their mouth to make game sounds go, no, you you don't. As long as you have a good enough desktop microphone and you, you're near it and you speak clearly, you can just get anything and have headphones work for game without any worried about two different devices and plug. This doesn't add anything but convenience for specifically people who have plug-in single wire headset adapt. So both of these, you, you, you need something like this if you want to use these types of wires. The mod mic and the uh, music, audio, new music, uh, you need a device that takes both a microphone and a headphone in. If you don't need that, if you just have headphones and a microphone, then anything goes. And then you're just looking at this, so you're not looking at this at all. That's for like starting out if you have specific needs for this. Then you're looking at the Sennheiser and it's not powerful enough. You would have to buy... No, but then you're back to the... Is it, all right, here, I'll answer this question because this will be the question people have. Is it worth buying this Sennheiser just for what it does with 
and then buying a Magni, and then forget about the whole, it takes a mic and you're gonna split it. Yes, I said it, I fucking said it. If you wanna play with surround sound gaming in your good headphones, good. Like I have the adapter, I brought the adapter down here. I could plug this in, I could plug this into here, and I could unplug this into here and I can go whoo-wee, actually plug the mic all together. And here we go. So now I'm putting my $1,800 fucking ethers onto this thing with all that shit on it. And then I got to switch to the set. Oh, by the way, this knob actually controls the master volume in Windows. Interesting. It's not internal. It's controlling the volume of Windows. And I'm not sure if that has something to do with the 7.1 and how it works, but that that's one of the quirks, I suppose. All right, back to simpler times. 99, I'm at 99. And that's a loud ass song and it's like, it's playing it, but it's not like I want, there's so much other shit going on in here with processing and everything that they couldn't, cause it's only USB powered. If this had an external power brick, they might've been able to say, okay, all this power to control the DSPs and shit, and then all the way up wall power to fucking make it go, I and mean, you don't, they don't, that's not, that's maximum. With that song, this should be exploding. And it's not. So, if you bought this, it, here, here's, here's the end of the thing. If you don't have any money, you buy this. It's a blatantly easy thing. I'd take this over an E10K any day of the week. Origin, if you're more doing music than, than gaming, if you don't need the mic split, Origin again, three times the price. If you're doing very, if you're dedicated to gaming, don't look at the Burson, which by the way gets very hot and you can't turn it off when it's in your computer. So there's nothing like a nice hot class A box to sit in your computer all day just to add a little more heat to it. Gamers, well, is it proximity based by the way? Did it just come on with me getting near it and not even touching? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't touch it. Let it fade out for a second. If you're a gamer, it is proximity based. Fucking design of the fucking decade. If you're a gamer and you want to try, if you, if you keep hearing this stuff about all oh, 7.1, it's not the headset. It's not the fucking Razer Jagsaw fucking Astro uh, 420 Blaze It can't. It's not those. Get good, solid, well, good, solid Insano headphones, real headphones, stereo, planars, advanced alphas, TH-100s will be a little bit pricey, but T6, get good headphones. Start with that, start with stereo, and then you can get one of these and hit that fucking 7.1 button and set your game up to 7.1 and set Windows up to 7.1. Let it do its thing and then play with it and you'll, you'll, you'll grasp the actual, like, oh, Oh, this is what they're talking about. You only have two ears, you only need two drivers. Or you only need two locations. That's just a lie, because I love 7.1 surround sound. I don't know, fuck it. I'd say if you're a real gamer, you get real ga real good headphones, you got a solid amplifier. I'll link the Magni 3 in the description. I'll link the X7S in the description. What's another standalone, just just amplifier? What do, they, what do we even have? It's SMSL, Fa? Whatever, you, you buy this, you put it on this side of your desk, you buy an amplifier, you plug it into the headphone output of this, not the line output, the headphone output of it, you set that amplifier, you never plug a microphone into this, you set that amplifier and forget it, use this to control the volume, turn on all, on all of your features, it, you're golden. You're fucking golden. It'd be, it's worthwhile there, especially with it under $200. Now it's just waking up every time I wave my hand next to it, it's annoying, flip it over now. So pretty. Okay, this review has gone on for, uh, I'm gonna call, my battery died. So I'm gonna say 47 minutes. Am I close? This gets a, eh, no, it's too expensive. You don't need class A for gaming. And it's if it's just for amps, if it's just a fucking thing, yes, it's very good. It's very clear, it's very clean. Probably competes with that, but I don't need it in this form factor and it doesn't have enough features and that line outs, pre outs are basically useless unless I could switch. This um, is $37. It's the cheapest DAC amp that I've reviewed. 
Is that true? It might be the cheapest DAC amp I reviewed, and it has features. It has a quarter inch jack, it has tone controls, it has a pre-out, and even though it's annoying that it doesn't shut it off, it's it's thirty seven fucking dollars. Again, it's 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 one of those things that's like I love this of all the things here. I I only love this the more because it's from the future, but this is cheap and works. And even though the fidelity is not quite there because it's thirty seven dollars, it's thirty seven dollars. So there you go. There's a review. Wallpaper link in the description because waifus are waifus for anyone who's watching Z reviews for more than one episode. Um. The Patreon, which bought that and that and these, well, didn't buy those, but now this was loaned to me by um, Periapt, Periapt Cables, who does the, uh, is in league with Burson, so, sorry, <laughs> it's not, not good, but, um, thank you for that, to them, the Patreon also pays to, well, I'm, I'm now done, Here, here's, here's, the, I have to plug myself, sorry guys, I'm done with this, and I kind of want to keep it, but I'm not going to. Unless there's something new coming out. So I'm going to sell this, and I'm going to sell this on the Patreon to a patron in, a, in the bracket. Every month I sell things that I've reviewed and the review's been released. So if you're seeing this review, and it's, you're in the same month as the review, next month, whoever's the highest bidder, just you could offer me $15 for that. You might be the only one that bids on it. It's the way that works. And I pay shipping. And I ship international, but I charge you half. All right, point is, we're done here. This sounds the best. This doesn't sound like it's powerful enough. This is fucking $37 and wallpaper. Did I forget anything? I don't know. Check the description. I'll fix my errors down there.